Happy holidays, happy new year, and welcome to season number four of the South Texas Border Sports Podcast. I am the host, Ray Silva. Folks, uh, for those of you who have missed the previous three seasons, we're available through Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple iTunes, as well as available through iHeartRadio and also now featuring on Amazon Music. Just ask Alexa to search for the South Texas Border Sports Podcast. Folks, to open up season number four, you may have seen his work in previous years. He's a good good friend of mine. He's out of the Harlingen area. He's uh, what, one of my good, good friends in, in this journalistic world. Eladio Jaimes, La Pluma Deportiva. How are you? Happy holidays. How is everything going, my friend? Ray, always good to see you, man. Happy holidays to everybody. And uh, a few weeks ago, I posted on Facebook, how how far into January can you wish people a happy new year? And I had a different different array of answers from one day to all month to all year. So happy new year to everybody. We make up our own rules around here, right, Ray? Yeah, so pretty happy, much. Happy, Happy New Year to you and Happy New Year to everybody. Thank, thanks for having me. Looking forward to to whatever we're going to talk about. Absolutely, Eladio. I mean, hey, I mean, for me, I just view it like the first uh, 15 days, unless I haven't seen you in like over three months. And and then that's where you kind of pro, uh, pro stretch that the uh, rule a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But Eladio, you know, you've been out of the sports world for a little while, man. I mean, how's that coming along and what kind of like, push that decision to jump out of the sports scene, but still kind of like relevantly talk uh, uh, some of the more hot topic issues still nowadays. So uh, I'll start by, by saying I, I, I work at the Valley Morning Star in Hardingen for about 10 years from 2001 to 2012 when I left and I covered all, you know, down here, like the, the majority, especially on this side of the valley, we don't have too many professional sports or college sports. We had the Rio Grande Valley White Wings. That was always fun to cover. Covered a lot of high school football, a lot of high school sports. I left in 2012 to go work at TSTC, our local uh, technical college here. And I'm currently working for AEP Texas, which uh, is the power company doing public relations. I'm the spokesperson for the company. And I'm also on the school board here in Hardington. So to answer your question, how do you stay in the know, Ray, per se. Uh, when I left the newspaper, I think one of the things I missed most was the interaction with athletes, with coaches, and just being able to talk shop, you know, like being able to talk X's and O's with with, with coaches and just strategy and upcoming games and, and, and just telling the stories, especially here in the Valley, telling the stories of the Valley athletes because uh, we have some phenomenal athletes down here. And so uh, telling the stories on a personal level, I missed that. Uh, when I ran for school board and won, I've now been elected once and reelected two more times. I, that, that component kind of came back into the mix, being involved with, with the Harrington School District. I was able now to put away my, my journalism training and I could go to a game and, and, and applaud and cheer and scream and, and scream at the refs, you know, because now I was a fan. Not only was I a fan, I'm a school board member. So I'm supporting our, our students, our student athletes, our coaches. And, and so uh, I kind of stayed, stayed in, in the know there. Like, you know, it was mostly, it was hard engine. Uh, it was like a hard engine, uh, mostly hard and gym, but, but I tried to keep up with what was going around in the Valley. Plus having friends like you and, and other, other sports journalists around that I kind of keep up with their, with their writings, with their podcasts, with their uh, shows, watching the local news, you kind of, you kind of, if you want to, you can stay in, in the mix uh, a little bit, but I'll tell you this much, you know, a few years ago, I was having a conversation with some buddies of mine, uh, guys that you might know, a guy like uh, Armando Garza, Mike Gonzalez, these other, former sports writers as well. And not being in the mix 24 seven, it kind of, you, you, you still have the contacts, but you really don't have the information uh, on, on, 
at a moment's notice. You kind of have to wait for somebody to tell you, for for a reporter to report it. So when uh, UTRGV was looking into hiring a coach, I kind of I missed being a sports writer at that moment because I missed trying to be the first one to break the news of who's going to be the coach, who's going to be the coach. And so, so I was just waiting, waiting patiently around. And look, look, man, I'm a proud alum of uh, UTRGV, Pan Am, the Bronx. And I was there. That's where I saw you at that press conference. So I was sitting next to a buddy of mine and he says, uh, what questions would you ask when they opened it up for questions? And I said, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a reporter mode right now. I, I'm here as a fan, as a big supporter of the Vaqueros. And, uh, and I got, was able to see you there. So, you know, you can still stay in the mix if you want, if you really want it. So that, that's what I try to do. Absolutely, Eladio. You know, it's been one of those uh, fun transitional things where sometimes you kind of get that itch to get back in it. You, you know, from the moment that Travis Bush was named a head coach, for you, what did it mean to see the evolution of college football now starting to come to arrive here in the Rio Grande Valley? I mean, a little under two years away, two two and a half years away from it from starting. I mean, August 30th is that the uh, target date now. Right. Well, I was at Pan Am between 1998 and around 2002 uh, and I remember there was shirts in the bookstore I'm sure you've seen them every every college that doesn't have a football team has these shirts and it said UTPA football still undefeated and so me and a couple of buddies had had some shirts like that and uh, just there's always there's there'd always been talk you know right there's always been talk what if UTP, UT Pan Am, now UTRGV had, had a football team. What is it going to take? And I think when UTSA kind of took that step uh, back in 2010, maybe, really, was it? 2011 was their first year, but they obviously took steps before that. When they took those steps to create a football team, uh, people started talking to about it again. People started talking about football in the Valley, football at UTRGV. And uh, when, when, we, when we had the merger, whether some people liked it or not, uh, you know, it created these types of opportunities. You know, the medical school was a reason why they wanted to 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 have one big university, but it, it it created other opportunities like this one. And I think the students spoke up; they knew what they wanted, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud that the students, and, and mostly I'm proud that 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 the adults, the the, the older adults, uh, listened to what the students wanted. And so, uh, it, it, it's it's been a long time coming, and. As you all know, people love their football down here. You know, whether it's high school football, you either follow your local your local town, or you're a UT or an Aggie fan or or, or something. But now we're gonna have our own team. So uh, it it's 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 been a long, uh, a long not not the, not the actual process, but I guess the waiting. You know, when I think back 20 years ago, when I was walking the halls of, of Pan American and. And thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we had a football team, something that we can get excited about in the fall? I mean, and I'm sure it goes beyond that. I'm sure it goes beyond that. Students that were there, you know, in the 90s, 80s, 70s, you know, I don't know, maybe thinking like, you know, it'd be cool if we had football. Uh, It was always fun to go to the Bronx basketball games, to Bronx baseball games. I covered a lot of baseball games at Jody Ramsey Stadium. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody, not just that's involved, but just anybody that lives in the Valley to be able to have, uh, uh, division one football here, here in our backyard of Edinburgh, Texas. Absolutely. As I'm being joined by Eladio Jaimes, Eladio, you know, it's been, uh, one of those things where you're an alum, you've seen the process just grow throughout, but for you, that has been on the east side of the valley what's it gonna take for them to kind of catch up because this is the way i kind of see it and without offending anyone here but i view kind of like the east side of the valley kind of like still a decade behind the west side of the valley 
And I, I think evolution has to continue to trend in the right direction, pulling everyone together and pulling on the same boat. Uh, yes, UTRGV has done a phenomenal job uh, throwing a few sporting events out there in that direction. But for the common sports fan, what else is it going to take to get that east side of the valley to connect with that west side of the valley? Right. And, you know, I don't know. The simple question is I don't know what it's going to take. But I can, I, can, I can guarantee you that we have to come to a realization that UTRGV is not an Edinburgh thing or a Hidalgo County thing, but they're a valley wide, valley wide entity. It's, 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 you know, it's the valleys, it's the RGVs, it's our university, right? And we have other colleges, but, but this is our university here in the valley. And even here in Hardingen, we, 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 uh, a couple of years ago, we, we built a high school in partnership with UTRGV, which is, at, which is technically a UTRGV campus and we share it, you know, with with the college. So, so we have a few campuses here in Hardingen. Uh, I think Brownsville has, has their, their their old UTB campus, which is now UTRGV. So, I, I I think I think all the all the ingredients are there to where this side of the valley can can jump on that train of you know if we're talking specifically specifically about vaquero football, jump on that vaquero football train. But it's going to take a lot of effort also from, from, from UTRGV and other folks to, to get that presence here. And I know that that's something that, in talking to Chase, that's something that, and Dr. Bailey, that's something that uh, UTRGV wants to do intentionally, right? They want, to, they want to have a bigger presence here. But we also, as, as the community here in, on the east side in Ardenton, San Benito, Rio de Los Fresnos, Brownsville, we have to buy in. And so, uh, you know, you always, people always say, well, you know, people talk the talk, but uh, can you walk the walk? I'm hosting a meet and greet for Coach uh, Bush, and you're invited. Ray, if you want to come to Hardingen, uh, I'm hosting a meet and greet for him. I'm co-hosting with a few people, including one of our UT regents, Dr. Nolan Perez, who's a fellow board member of mine, uh, my cousin, Janie Hymas. She's a, she's a justice of the peace here in town and alum, proud alum also uh, of UTRGV, UT Pan Am. And so we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna have this meet and greet at the chamber so that the people here in Harlingen, San Benito, that's my goal, right? I wanna fill up the room and have people, the, the, the fans from this side of the valley be able to come and meet and shake hands and take pictures with Coach Bush because that is their, that is their coach. That is the coach for their, the Valley's team, right? And so I think we all just have to uh, uh, do our part and try try to try to get people excited, you know. And I think uh, I've I, I I've been telling folks I said I'm I'm on board a hundred percent on this. I said because I was having lunch with a buddy of mine. He's an Aggie, and I said every fall you have something to look forward to. Your Aggies are going to play football. An next Longhorn, their Longhorns are going to play football. You can go up to a game. I said, as as an alum of a college of a university that didn't have football, we watch college football because it's fun and we kept up with it, you know. But now we have a team. Now we have a team that we can root for that we're connected to, and I hope that that's what the entire valley uh, feels that excitement. And I hope they stay excited because I think we're going to get excited initially. But I hope we stay excited. I hope we understand what this really represents, not just for the school and the students, but for the entire community. I think it's, it's you keep using the word evolution. It, it, it's an evolution, right? And, you know, we're kind of moving in the right direction. And, and who knows where this can lead us to. Absolutely, Eladio. You know, uh, I, I appreciate the invite. Harlingen is, has always been a, a very nice town, a, 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 a very welcoming town of, um, in the, in the few times that I've uh, been there, it's, it's it's great. It's a great place, nice uh, access to and everything. Uh, but for you, you know, where does La Pluma come from? Where, where does that nickname uh, come from for you? 
It's la mera pluma. La mera pen. pluma, which it translates to the main pen. The main pen, right? And so, you know, years ago, in my younger days, uh, I was creating, I don't know if I was creating an email. I think it was an email on like Yahoo or Hotmail or something. And I was, I was a student, I worked at the student newspaper at, at Pan Am. I had just started working there. And at the Pan American, it used to be called the Pan American with uh, Dr. Selber. And before that was, was, a, was a gentleman named uh, Arturo Longoria, a great mentor of mine. And before that, Bob Rollins, another great mentor of mine. Uh, but I was working at that school paper and I had to create an email. And for some reason, people were like, you know, you use your name or use your last name, first initial. I said, no, nah, man, it needs to be something catchy. And it just came to me and like, you know, I'm a writer, you know, La Mera Pluma. I'm going to put, and I typed in La Mera Pluma at Hotmail or whatever it was. And it accepted it. And, and I started using that as my handles on Twitter, Instagram. And uh, even, even when I ran for school board, you know, like, well, what's your Twitter, La Mera Pluma? And I think I changed it after that to, to Eladio Jaime said, uh, at Eladio Jaime or something, but. I've kept I've kept La Mera Pluma on Instagram, Mom at La Mera Pluma, uh, and, and others. And, and what's what's funny about it, what's 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 cool about it is that I still I still see see people, you know, especially when I go to the Upper Valley, and you know, old friends, colleagues, classmates from 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 Pan Am or or people I've worked with, and you know, they still call me, Hey Pluma, and, you know, it's it, it's kind of neat, you know, it was fun. Like I said, it it just. I've I've seen some I've seen some wackier uh, emails you know uh, that folks had when they were in your younger years. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad mine's at least clean and we can talk about it on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, I mean la la meta pluma, you know, it's just something uh, that strikes to me as the as the main sports pen here in the Rio Grande Valley when it comes to uh, journalistic uh, sports. You know, the, but for you just. Uh, how was it that you even got yourself in, involved in the sports writing and even up to up to now, I mean, where you're just still in the know? Uh, <clears throat> well, I got involved at, at, at I was looking for a job. I was I was looking for a job at Pan Am. And I'd like to I'd like to tell you that I have this story of, oh, I grew up writing in my journals and hoping to be a sports writer one day and to be even a writer. I didn't. Uh, I, I was at Pan Am. It was the fall of 1998. And I remember, I remember we're, I, we're, I was at the library with a, and I, and I bumped into a buddy of mine from Arlington and we got to talking and I said, Hey man, I'm looking for a job. If you know of anything, he says, well, I'm the sports editor at the, at the Pan American. So he was majoring in communications and he was a sports editor. He was from Hardinger, like I said. He goes, you want to come be a sports writer? I'm like, sure. He goes, you can go to the basketball games, volleyball games, whatnot, and just and just cover them. And I had no idea what it took to cover a game. Like, what kind of notes do I take? Do I have to keep track of every score? Uh, and so... He goes, just go. He goes, look, go to a game this Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. He goes, take some notes, get some, get some quotes, do some interviews, and then, uh, and then come back and uh, write a story. And it wasn't a daily newspaper, so uh, I had a few days to kind of collect my thoughts and whatnot. So I wrote the story. I gave it to him. He goes, okay, well, look, let's look at it. And boom, 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 boom. He edited. He goes, you got the gist of it. He goes, you know, I always remember the most important part goes at the beginning and then this and that and very very basic journalism 101 there and so I kind of just fell in love with it and Ray you're not going to believe this but the very first game that I ever covered at Pan Am and if I ever run into him I'm going to remind him it was a uh, a double overtime game against Oral Roberts University at the Fieldhouse sometime in 1998 uh, and it was a double overtime game and we won the Bronx won and I, I interviewed Lalo Rios at the end of the game and I, I want to say that it might have it might have been his last home game 
So I was, I was new to sports writing, but I was new to sports. I'd read plenty of sports stories, features. I would read ESPN, the magazine, Sports Illustrated, why not? So I remember thinking, like, the story here is not the game and the final score. The story here is that this hometown guy who's been playing for four years just played in his last home game in front of his home crowd. Not just his home crowd being Pan Am, but Edinburgh. I mean, he was a star Edinburgh guy. So I started asking him questions about, you know, what it felt like to, to, to play in his last home game in front of his family and friends and all that. So uh, that was the first, that was the first uh, game I covered. And I just fell in love with it. And I told Joe, I said, hey, I want to do some more. So that sports editor is a guy named Joe Leal. And he is now a tennis coach at one of the middle schools here in Hardington. You know, he's been coaching here for, for a few years. So we still, we caught up over the holidays. We talked about this. We talked about other stuff that, that from, from our, from our, from our Pan American days. So, so that's how I got started. I just fell in love. Greg Selber, who, you know, uh, he's the one that got me, he got me in the door at the Valley Morning Star. He wrote for the Valley Morning Star before returning to, to Pan Am to be a professor. He wrote for the Valley Morning Star and I was able to, to, you know, become friends with him. And uh, we talked and he says, okay, you want a job? Let's get you a job at the Valley Morning Star. I said, all right. So it was ideal for me. I moved back to Hardingen uh, and I started working there. I, I, I figured I'd be there three to five years. I ended up staying there over 10 years. And then I left, uh, I left the, the industry per se, but uh, he was able to get me in there. And like I explained earlier, I, I took some other jobs, ran for school board. I, politics was always something that, that intrigued me, something that just like sports, right? And, and I don't know if you're into politics, right? But sports and politics, it's, you know, when I was campaigning in 2016, every meeting we had, I felt like, a, like it was a coach's meeting when I met with my team. I felt like it was a coach's meeting. We were strategizing what we're going to do this week. And then I'm like, okay, I know my opponent. This is what my, my this is what I can anticipate my opponent doing. And this is how we're going to defend it. Like, I'm telling you, man, it, it was a little bit like I treated it almost like, like I'm game planning. I felt like one of the coaches that I covered for so many years. And, and then when I would get interviewed by the media, the local media, like I, it, it's almost like I knew how to get interviewed because I had done it for so long. So uh, I love politics and I knew that I was going to get in, involved in politics somehow. And, and I ran for school board here. I'm, I'm going to wrap up my third term in 2025. And then who knows, who knows what I'm going to do from there. I might, I might, might, might stay on, might go run for something else or uh, you, you never know, Ray, you know, you kind of just leave it open. And, uh, but I, I tell you this much. If uh, I think that if I want the 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 1.3 billion tonight, I think it's tonight, isn't it? Yeah. The, the mega millions. If I want that 1.3 billion tonight, you're uh, calling it quits, man. I don't see uh, you doing anything else. See, you, uh, you, no, you, I, you're I, getting I, away from public spotlight. I, I am gonna go uh, <laughs> uh, buy my own newspaper and 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 and, and, and do that because that's that's something that I do miss. I do miss. I do miss the newsroom camaraderie. I still have dreams of walking into a newsroom with all your friends. And, and uh, I miss that newsroom camaraderie. I miss that, that uh, the deadline pressures and, and all the back and forth between journalists. So uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I, I'm blessed that I was able to experience that uh, for 10 years of my life. Uh, you all just uh, take a sidestep and let them run the show. Let them run the show. Yeah. And, and, you know, and sometimes when you take those side steps and let them run the show, sometimes that can be good for your own mental health, too. Because if you get too, if you get too caught up, I mean, you, you know, you talk about all the stuff that's going on at the state national level. Sometimes you got to just step back and say, you know what? I'm not going to lose my sanity over this today. I'm going to watch you. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to I'm going to I'm going to choose peace. I'm going to choose some inner peace. And uh, but uh, yeah, so so, you know. Uh, but I really enjoy, I was able to, to follow the, you know, this past football season at the high school level, I was able to follow the, the Cardinals and the Hawks and just kind of what they did PSJ North. I saw coach Kaufman at the press press conference for Travis Bush. 
and I was able to congratulate him to uh, for his for his outstanding season. Uh, I covered his son Matthew Kaufman when he was a quarterback for McCann Memorial, and so uh, like like a lot of these coaches, I go way back with Coach Bush, Bruce Bush. You know, I mean, when he was at PSJ North. And, and and he was one of my he was one of my favorites to interview. And I told him that day I was able to say hi to him. Uh, and I and I told him I said you know what you're one of my favorites to cover because he was a good interview. You know I would come up to him after the game and I would ask him about a key play during the game, first quarter, second quarter, and he would take out a notepad and he would go back and look. The the, the guy was keeping notes during the game, right? And to me, that said, like, man, like this guy's this guy's a student and a teacher of the game because like he knows he made notes of the stuff that he had to go back and either either uh, acknowledge or, or fix. And so uh, I saw Coach Mel Rios there. You talk about the PSJ area. Mel Rios was there and I was able to catch up with him. Uh, Orlando Garcia. I mean, there was just guys that day from from all up and down the valley, old coaches that I hadn't talked to in a long time. Uh, from Edinburgh, from far, our Hardigen coaches were there. So I was happy to see a lot of uh, local high school football coaches show up to that press conference and support uh, uh, not just Coach Bush, but the entire uh, ETRG of Uva kind of football program. You know, you bring up Mel Reels. Every time I talk to him, he'd have one phrase, one phrase only. What's that? No comment. <laughs> he lived and died off the no comment. And one year, one year, I was working out of a, out of a newspaper in uh, Corpus Christi Bay Area Sports. I'm pretty sure you, you yeah, have seen yeah. them a time or two. One year, I don't know what got into our director's uh, idea to plaster a player from PSA High School on the front cover. My delivery days were usually Tuesdays and Wednesdays, depending on the day that the paper was delivered to, to my vehicle for me to go distribute to other high schools. I get to PSJ High. You see Mel Reels just like standing there in, outside of the auxiliary gym <laughs> because that's where his office was located. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. And he, the First thing he asked, may I see the cover of the paper? Because he had already seen it online. Mm -hmm. But back then, you didn't have the resources to download it and and, and all the good stuff. So he wanted a physical copy. And he hounded me with, like, the same question. I go, Coach, I'm going to respond all of your questions with just one answer. No comment. (laughs) And boy, that was the greatest relief I ever got right. from, from using that statement ever in my lifetime to a coach who kept giving me no comments all the freaking time. Yeah, and the one yeah. time I decided to use it, it was right then and there. And well, I got him off my back with this one <laughs> because he wanted like, Six, maybe ten covers of that cover that in one color. He 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 wanted it in in, in color, but right. I just my bosses just didn't want to do it. But at, at that time, it was like ah, whatever, you know. I got him off the back of my with my no comment, but it, that was my uh, lo- that was my lone Mel Rios experience for right, me. Right, right. But Eladio, you know. I appreciate your time, the efforts of taking uh, time out of the busy schedule. Uh, Thank you so much. I wish you the best uh, out there in Arlington and running for school board. You you do a fantastic job for that community. Uh, Just keep up the good work. Just uh, keep being you. Uh, You have uh, whatever you want to come on back. I mean, just to buzz me up, you you have the platform here. Appreciate it, and uh, thank you so much. Well, dude, th- and thank you, Ray, for 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 having one for having me on. You know, I'm glad we ran into each other there at the uh, at, at the at, at the stadium uh, at the press conference. We used to see each other most at the Edinburgh baseball stadium yep. uh, during Roadrunner games. Yep. Uh, 
but thank you for doing this. You know, you kind of, you kind of, uh, you know, the, the, this, this, uh, this show you got, it just kind of keeps uh, South Texas sports. Like you said, it keeps it relevant. It keeps people, you know, the, the, there's, there's a, there's, I want to say there's a need, but there's also, it's mostly a want for this, for, for, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of guys in the bag, like you and me, Ray, who love sports, loves talking about sports. And anytime that there's another, another avenue, another, another medium where they can go to and listen to a couple of dudes in glasses, talk about sports. And back in the day, you know, you, 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 believe it or not, you're providing a service to, 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 to that, that fan base in the Valley. So thanks for doing what you're doing. And, and if I heard you right, that you're starting your fourth season. Yes, uh, that is correct. My season number four. So that's cool, man. That's cool. Congratulations on that. Keep it up. You know, you, you, you've been doing this. You talk about, uh, you mentioned me being a meta pluma being around for a while. And, and I talk about other guys, you know, that, that I worked with, but you've been around, you, you've been around that whole time too, man. So you, you've been around and you've done, you've done a lot too for, for Valley sports all up and down. And, uh, and, and you know, for, for me to have gotten this started for almost four years ago, um, for me, you no, know, or being in my fourth season now, um, kind of started when the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and, or as we were right to entering the full throttle of it, that's how it got started. And then plus you have two local sports stations who really don't cover local sports unless it's high school football and that's about it. And they don't right. like, and sadly it's all about money and here we're not about the money. I mean, here it's just for the service and tr trying to keep that Avenue open that, Hey, there's always that niche for uh, for a local sports talk, and what better than to come up with a a local sports podcast where we can talk just about sure. anything and keep it just regional, you know. And to Absolutely. that point, you know, I, I I keep the Vipers, the Toros, and the University relevant whenever uh, my my guests come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, and 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 I'm glad you're doing that. You know. Uh, I can talk high school football or I can talk Paquero football or some Viper basketball. And uh, it's all sports. It's all fun. And to the, like I said, to the sports fan, like you and me, uh, this is what it's all about. All right. Eladio, many thanks, my friend. You got it, bro. Go Vaqueros. Thanks. Hello, sports fans. Thanks for listening to another episode of the South Texas Border Sports Podcast. This is your host, Ray Silva. Be tuned next week for another great episode as we drop podcasts every Monday here on anchor.fm forward slash STBS. Don't forget, our podcast can also be found via Google Podcast, Apple iTunes, and Spotify. Thanks for listening. <laughs>